There's no way this is gonna happen today. Oh, fire. Welcome back to the Glass Eye, and hello to all the new subscribers. There are several questions in the comments about lighting, audio, sound design, music, and we'll get to all those in this video. And the camera review will be a separate video. But before we get into all that, we're gonna take a couple steps back to the concept. A mistake I often made when I was starting out, and I still make sometimes, is, you know, there's like a cool subject like, you know, Porsche, and you got a cool camera like a Red, and you got Peter, mm -hmm. who's kind of a cool character, and so you, you think, okay, well, I'll just show up with a camera and shoot some stuff, and, and it'll turn out pretty cool. You really have to go in there with some sort of an idea, some sort of a concept or narrative. And it doesn't have to be complicated, it just has to be something. In this instance, it was exploring sort of the process that Peter goes through from looking for cars, constantly looking for cars, and he puts money and effort and everything into these cars, and then eventually you have a finished car that you can drive. So that's how simple it needs to be. Look for car, repair, drive. And I wanted the mood to kind of match the cars, which is sort of very visceral experience, right? They're very analog experiences. So from there, you make a shot list. And I knew there was six different types of footage that I wanted to capture. The search for the car, fixing the car, the shop environment, driving the car, a video portrait, and recording all the audio. One of the best pieces of advice I got on planning for a shoot is setting all these limitations for yourself. It was from Chivo from uh, Revenant. He didn't tell me personally. It's just I read in an article. You know, it's, there's this temptation to take all your stuff. I'm gonna take all my lenses, all my lights. And But this was a bare bones crew. And so I said, okay, I'm just gonna take one lens. The EF 24 to 70 F 2.8, it's all I'm gonna use. With the exception of the computer scene, I used the 100 mil macro just for his eyes and the computer screen, but everything else was shot in the 24 to 70. And again, that eliminates sort of a hassle and a feeling of overwhelm on the day of the shoot. And we only had one day. The next limitation that I imposed on myself was lighting. I could have brought, you know, my app your 300D, but that thing's a pain. You gotta put a soft. So forget it. I'm just gonna bring my quasar tubes. There's two quasar tubes and this little stick light that I have. And that's all I'm gonna bring for lights. And the rest I'll have to figure it out on the day of. And then as far as camera movement, I also thought, you know what, let's just stick to handheld for pretty much all of it. There were a couple of slider shots where I dollied in. And then I think maybe one or two gimbal shots while we were driving. And it kind of lent itself well to that sort of visceral analog feel that I was going for. Because we're going for that moody look, I was often just backlighting the scene. And so I, that's what I used the quasar tubes for. The only times I really used lighting, so the video portrait was one. So I just had that set up to kind of create a Rembrandt kind of lighting on Peter's face. There were a couple shots in the shop where I used the, the quasar, they're actually right here. I used the quasar tubes for uh, backlighting the scene. Um, and then I used a little stick light when he was on the computer. Again, we just killed all the lights and I used that to make it kind of really dramatic and moody. Because I didn't bring too much lighting, it was a matter of finding what was available in the space and then working with it. A great example of that is the windows on the garage were sort of like frosted. So what I did was just kill the house lights and you had this like diffused light coming in from there backlighting these 911 shells that were sitting there. Then you'd see these like beautiful silhouettes of that iconic 911 shape, like the fenders and just the body. And that was sort of the extent of it with the lighting. I hope that answers the question. Audio was obviously really important in this video, especially with a Porsche 911, an old one. They have such an iconic sound. I wanted to record the sound myself. So I had a uh, Sennheiser lav system, and then we just taped down the lav mic uh, wrapped up in a sock just because I was worried it was going to clip. But I think I wrapped it a bit too much because then trying to recover some of that muffled sound ended up being kind of challenging. Probably do it differently next time. We, you know, we rigged it up for sound, and we went for a little bit of a drive and shifted up through the gears and did some downshifts and blipped the throttle, and that way you have a bunch of stuff to work with in post when you're working with driving footage later on. Sound design and music breakdown was, uh, a few people asked that. The, the most important thing was not introducing the piece with music. And then that forced me to really be considerate of what kind of sounds there are gonna be. intro with the exhaust revving. That was something I, I knew I wanted to do right off the bat. That's inspired by a movie. Nobody guessed it, right? So keep guessing. I'm not going to tell you, but it's a 1960s racing movie. It's a pretty huge hint. So I've always, I love that intro sequence to that movie and I wanted to recreate it. This was a great opportunity to do that. So I knew I was going to start with that. And then after that, I, I needed to be mindful of the noises in the shop. And, and then like when he's on the computer, 
Um, other than the clicking of the keyboard, I needed to add a little something to create the tension of him like looking at cars and you know like searching, searching, and then finding the right one. And if it's the right price, then it is what it is. Motor is gone. Who cares? I'm rebuilding it. I use Soundly. It's a library of just sounds that you can subscribe to. So that's what I use. I find when I'm editing, I'm, I'm literally making noises with my mouth as I'm editing of what I think there should be as far as sound effect. So when I see the car go past the bushes, I'm like, I'm like, oh, okay, I need to do that. What's that? What does that consist of? So I'm like, all right, well, it's kind of like a whipping sound. So I, so I found a whipping sound and then I changed the pitch and I repeated it and I sub each subsequent whip was a different pitch. And so then you got to And also things go wrong. As you saw, we were actually supposed to film with the red car. I thought the red against the trees would look beautiful, right? It would really pop. And there's some significance uh, with the red car to Peter's shop. But the problem is we couldn't get it started. I mean, it hadn't been driven in a while. I this flickering yellow. It, just... it didn't work out. So then I had to return the camera the next morning. So all I did was like, okay, we got to get up really early in the morning. And he found another car that we could take out. And then that's why we ended up with the brown one. I, I can get the car today. I just can't do it. I don't think I can do it right now. Are you free tomorrow? No. And early, are you okay. free? I'm up at Cause I is it a flat six car? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they look good, but they don't run. I gotta give some shout outs again. Lauren Lapham for lending me the red Komodo. They're again, my go-to place. I just bought a camera from them. This one, I will talk about this one another day. It's an FX3. Big thanks to Peter for spending the time and arranging the cars. Andrew for helping drive the car that I was filming out of and shooting all this behind the scenes stuff. Thank you to Ilya, who also shot a little bit of behind the scenes. And thank you to you for watching. Um, and oh, a big thank you to Patrick Tommaso. Went out of his way to share it on it on Twitter and uh, encourage people to subscribe to the channel. So huge thank you to Patrick. And thank you to all the new subscribers. I hope you enjoy the channel. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time. Well, at least some, somewhat of a story. Yeah. When things go badly, just roll harder. <laughs>